ओम श्री साई राम ध्यान वाहिनी चैप्टर टू चैंटिंग गॉड्स नेम एंड मेडिटेशन स्पिरिचुअल एस्पिरेंट्स साधक ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड विल नेचुरली बी एंगेज इन रेपिटेशन ऑफ द नेम जपा एंड मेडिटेशन बट फर्स्ट वन हैज टू बी क्लियर अबाउट द पर्पज ऑफ रिपीटिंग द नेम एंड मेडिटेशन Without this knowledge, people believe them to be related to the objective world, capable of satisfying worldly desires, and hope to demonstrate their value by means of sensory gains. This is a grave error. Repetition of God's name and meditation are for acquiring one-pointed attention on the Lord, for casting off sensory attachments, and for attaining the joy derived from the basis of all sensory objects. the mind should not be wandering in all directions indiscriminately like the fly the fly dwells on the sweet meat shop and runs after the rubbish carts the fly that has such a mind has to be taught to understand the sweetness of the first place and the impurity of the second place so that it may not desert the sweet meat shop and pursue the rubbish cart when such teaching is imparted to the mind it is called meditation look at the other type the bee it has contact only with sweetness it approaches only flowers that possess nectar it is not attracted to other places it does not proceed there at all similarly one has to give up all inclinations towards sensory attraction toward the rubbish cart of the untrue and impermanent 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 as far as possible one has to direct the mind to all holy things which yield sweetness and the joy associated with the lord to attain this time is needed of course how long that time will be depends on the activities of the thought word and deed as well as on the motives that impel those actions god's meditation by its inner impact the main things to be considered are not at what expense one has prayed to the lord nor the number of years one has been engaged in it nor the rules and regulations one has followed nor even the number of times one has prayed over the main considerations are with what mind one has prayed with what degree of patience one has been awaiting the result and with what single mindedness one has craved godly bliss regardless of worldly happiness and delay with no lassitude and with constant attention to oneself one's meditation and one's toss if one examines deeply the success in getting rid of all idea of self one can one self gauge the progress made instead if one is engaged in counting the rules and adding up the time spent and the expense incurred such meditation can belong only to the objective world it can never come into the subjective and spiritual fields repetition of god's name and meditation japa and dhyana should never be judged on mere external standards they are to be judged by their inner effects their essence is their relationship to the atma the immortal atmic experience should never be mixed up with low activities of temporal world such activities deserve to be avoided if room is given for them and if one sways between impatience and sloth and if one always worries oneself feeling why has it not come it why is it still far away then it all becomes simply repeating the name and meditation done with intent to gain with an eye on the fruit thereof the single fruit of repetition of divine names and meditation is this the conversion of the out faced into the in faced the turning inward of one's eye the inward eye seeing the reality of atmic bliss for this transformation one has to be always active and hopeful regardless of the time taken and the difficulties encountered one should not count the cost time and the trouble one should wait one should await the descent descent of the lord's grace this patient waiting is itself part of the austerity tapas of meditation sticking unfalteringly to the o is the austerity 
the three paths of meditation there are three ways by which is aspirants try to enter the path of meditation the path of truth satvik marg the path of fashion and emotion rajasik marg and the path of ignorance tamasik marg the pure serene satvik path on this path one considers repetition of the name and meditation as a duty and suffers any amount of trouble for its sake one is fully convinced that all this is just an illusion so one does only good under all conditions and at all times one desires only the good of all and is always loving toward all one spends time uninterruptedly in the remembrance and meditation of the lord one does not crave even the fruit of repeating the name and meditation one leaves it all to the lord the passionate restless rajasik path here one craves the fruit of one's act at every step if the fruit is not available then gradually laxity and disgust overpower and spiritual aspirant and repetition of the name and meditation slowly dry up the ignorant tamasik path this path is even worse the lord will come into the memory only in times of danger or acute suffering or when one is the victim of loss or pain at such times such a person prays and vows to arrange this worship puja offer this particular food or build this kind of temple to the lord one will be calculating the quantity of food placed before the lord the tribute offered at his feet the number of prostrations performed and the number of times the shrine was circled and ask for proportionate awards for those who adopt this attitude in meditation the mind and intellect can never be pure most people now follow only the passionate restless rajasik and dull ignorant tamasik paths in repeating the divine name and meditation however the very intention of repeating the divine name and meditation is to purify the mind and the intellect in order to achieve this the first path is best pure serene satvik meditation when the mind and the intellect become pure they will shine with the splendor of understanding of the atma he in whom this understanding shine fully is called a sage rishi the knower of atma becomes the atma itself brahma vid brahmaiva brahmate the goal of life that which makes life worthwhile is the understanding of the atma or in other words the basis of the individual soul jiva the need for bodily bodily and mental training there is a close mutual relationship between the attitudes of the body and the attitudes of the mind so people's inner feelings will be evident from their physical bodies the stance and the appearance of the body it help us to discover these feelings take one example with the loins girded the sleeves of the shirt rolled and the palms rounded into the fist it is not possible to exhibit love or devotion with bent knees the eyes half closed and the hands raised up over the head with the palms joined is it possible to show one's anger or hatred or cruelty that is why the ancient sages used to tell the spiritual aspirant that it is necessary during prayer and meditation to adapt the appropriate bodily pose they saw that it is possible to control the waywardness of the mind by this means of course for the expert spiritual aspirant meditation is easily on any pose but for the novice such physical means are essential this bodily and mental training must be undergone only to be later discarded as but a means to attain the true and eternal atma until this is realized spiritual discipline has to be const- consistently practiced until the goal of meditation is achieved the well established discipline of sitting posture asanas has to be followed the curriculum has to be adhered to till then after attainment of the goal that is after the mind manas and the intellect buddhi have been conquered and brought under control one can be immersed in meditation wherever one finds oneself on the bed in the chair on the rock or in a cart once you learn to ride a motorcycle you can ride on any road under all conditions but when you are just learning to ride 
for your own safety and for the safety of those around you you have to select an open parade ground and you have to follow certain principles of balance this is essential so to those who engage in meditational practice sadhana have to follow a certain course of training no change can be made in this so the passionate restless rajasik and the dull ignorant forms can never be considered meditation if the spiritual practice becomes fully pure and serene sattvic that is best to describe anything in words is difficult it might even cause boredom but to demonstrate it by deed is easier and more pleasant to make people understand by doing meditation is better than by talking about it my writing on it and you are reading it Uh, will not make it easy through meditation people reach the divine experience of realizing the atma within themselves through meditation spiritual aspirants are able to cast off sheets of ignorance layer after layer they withdraw their sense perceptions from contact with worldly objective experiences the process that aims at this holy consummation deserves to be called meditation for this purpose for this process one must be equipped with good habits discipline and high ideals one must be full of renunciation toward worldly things and their attractions whatever the situation one should conduct oneself with enthusiasm and joy whatever is done must be dedicated not for the aching out of livelihood but for earning atmic bliss atma ananda one should train oneself to adopt a good sitting pose asana to avoid tension of the body and to ease the mind from the weight and pressure of the body this is what deserves to be called pure meditational practice sattvic dhyana sadhana discipline is very necessary for this everyone has a right to spiritual success the troubles and tribulations that come in the wake of an attempt to destroy the undesirable activities of the mind will disappear through the strict course and rules described above what remains is only putting them into actual practice by the spiritual aspirant even the most powerful drug cannot effect a cure when it is brought to the bedside of the patient the sufferer has to take it in it the little by little as per schedule with all the attendant care and try to assimilate it into the system the healing principle of the drug must pervade the entire body the body must be suffused with the drug similarly the authoritative texts siddhantas and the vedanta have no power to destroy individual faults and 15 weaknesses if full results are wanted then one must give up all faults and low feelings and act according to the true teachings of the vedanta and the siddhantas if one does one will attain the fruit the secret of success in meditation lies in the purity of the inner life of the asp- spiritual aspirant the success is proportionate to the importance of the spiritual aspirant gives to right conduct san marga everyone has a right to achieve this high degree of success i don't say this is this in just a quiet one tone i declare this loud enough for all quarters to hear knowing this meditate and advance do meditation and progress realize the atma jai sai ram